Another thing we can do personally, if the bump is not too huge, is just to pause. I did a sitting once where the topic was the power of pause. And, um, and what do we do when we're pausing? Well, one thing we can do is we can invite in a moment of pause, a larger sense of ourself to be known. And this larger sense of self, if we're already in our awakened life, we probably know what consciousness is. We can probably find it without a lot of effort. But even if we don't, haven't completely um, stabilized our whole being realization, I really have not worked with anyone that hasn't at some point in time had some sense of some expansion or rightness with the world. Often if I ask um, students questions, they might just remember like, oh, I remember when I was six years old and you know, um, my parents took me for a walk in the forest and there were that, those deep ancient trees. I just knew that I was right in the world or you know, sitting in a hammock um, with the butterflies floating around and just a sense of rightness with the world. And I've actually never, I've never personally talked to anyone that if you don't get them into a quiet, um, safe feeling for a conversation that they haven't had some experiences like that. And so at any time we can pause and we can invite that sense of okayness or a fundamental wellness or rightness with the world to be there. And we can bring that to our attention through the power of memory and invitation. And that can be a very, very powerful tool to have that with us while we are um, unraveling old broken territories and things like that. Um, I remember once when I fell into a broken zone myself and I was having a, 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 a therapeutic session with a very skilled focusing teacher. So she's not a Trillium teacher, but again, some of these overlap in all kinds of therapeutic traditions. She asked me to look for a larger sense of self that was holding my painful experience. And at the time I was so merged with the pain that I couldn't find a larger sense of self, but it occurred to me to ask her if she could be that for me. And her answer was yes. So this is again, part of the power of mutuality of if we are so entangled with a broken zone that we can't pause and find a sense of okayness or wellness, perhaps someone else can do that for us. And it really only took a very short time of her holding that larger space for me to be able to um, find a kind of fundamental sense of okayness inside of myself. She then assured me that I only needed to be a tiny bit bigger than the pain I was in. And that was so helpful for me because again, I had this cognitive understanding that I had to be, you know, really fully conscious um, of the larger sense of self that I was for there to be any value. I was too um, kind of black and white in my thinking and just a little bit of bigger space was all I needed to have. And in that little bigger space, when I was no longer merged with my problem, I could begin to be curious about it. I could begin to be compassionate around it. I could begin to investigate it and untangle it with that kind of gentleness. So it's okay to look for it. That's another kind of mistake that I had. I thought that it sort of had to, the sense, a larger sense of self had to happen through grace. You know, I had to like, um, just wait for that good day when it would be really kind of evident to me. And I, I don't know if I thought it was cheating or what, but I didn't feel like I should have to look for it. It's maybe like, you know, like if we're in a relationship, we think our spouse should know that I don't like something. And we don't bother to bring it into conversations like, well, actually, I don't like to go out walking on a hot day. We just, you should have known that. No. So I somehow that had kind of fallen over to me that I thought that when I needed a sen larger sense of space the most, that it would just come to me. And I never really stopped and paused to invite it to be there and to look for it, how it was there already. And so it was very helpful for me to learn, realize that I could make an invitation and I could look for it. Again, I'll use another example because right now I'm at the ocean side and, you know, going to the tide pools. And it just happens again and again when I first look in the tide pool, all I see is rocks. I see rocks and water. And I look and I see rocks and water. 
And then if I pause and, and I'm curious, I go like, oh, that rock is an, an enemy. Oh, look at that rock is a hermit crab. crab. Oh, and that rock is a starfish. But I don't see them initially. I only see rocks. And I have to be curious and have the cognitive understanding that not everything in here is a rock. And so again, we can invite, we can um, compassion to be with us. We can invite curiosity to be with us. We can have an investigative approach to what's going on inside of me right now. And we can invite um, just larger sense of self or a sense of wellness to be there. And then when something like that comes, even a sniff or a whiff of it, we can sink into it and feel it as fully as possible. While at the same time, we can, we'll just continue to hold that there will inevitably be fears, doubts, and uncertainty. But we do have a lot of, um, you know, it's a, not that fix or controlling attitude that we might have started with. It's an allowing and an invitation. And I also feel imagination is a very powerful tool. So if we've, and remembering. So if we've ever felt a sense of spaciousness, remember it and imagine it, invite it. All of those things. Um, in my own awakening, I first had to, um, I would kind of practice sometimes, this worked for me. I would practice when I was doing something that was very repetitive, that didn't require a lot of mental um, faculties. I would also sense for, is there something larger that's here now too? Like so the first time it happened, I was had a large hallway to paint and you know it already been all cut in. So it's just gonna be painting. And while I was doing this repetitive, calm action, I thought, can I invite a larger sense of, of self or consciousness or spaciousness to be here with this action? And yes, it could be there. So I would just practice a little bit, you know, I guess, practice doesn't have to be sitting with your eyes closed meditating, right? Because we want to bring this into life, into living life. So I'd practice doing something, taking a walk. Can I walk from a place of a larger sense of self? And I'd think, oh, I can. Or just like, or just a sense of wellness or a sense of okayness. So there was a development that I could do on my own. Um, it wasn't like I had to wait until it was just kind of blazed out or fell on me. 